uh, the world-renowned, the infamous C.B. Sobolski. How are you, sir? Good, man. How's everything? I'm uh, chilling and relaxing. Good. Uh, now, you, sir, have been quite busy. I have. Um, since leaving an editor, you've uh, taken up a writer's mantle at, uh, at Marvel. Yes, I have. And uh, just give us a quick rundown of some of the books you've been working on. Uh, the main title that I guess people know me for is this week continuing is the Marvel Fairy Tales line, X-Men Fairy Tales, Spider-Man Fairy Tales, Avenger Fairy Tales. We kind of reimagine some of the classic fairy tales with Marvel characters. Captain America is Peter Pan. This is Pinocchio is the, the Vision, Vision, which was a great issue, by yep. the way. I just read we that. did a reverse Cinderella story with Peter Parker as Cinderella and the Gwen Mary Jane love triangle. So it's been going really well. Quick Otherwise, the there's the, uh, the Loners, which is the superhero self-help group. It's a bunch of uh, superheroes. Old B-list characters like Ricochet from Slingers, Julie from Power Pack, uh, Darkhawk. Dark yep. And they're trying to give up being superheroes. They're sick of the superhero life, want to be normal kids. It's kind of like the old, uh, you know, the, the, the child movie stars go yeah. bad. They see themselves going bad and want to try to get out of the life. It's an entire cast of Corey Feldman's with an A&E special afterwards. E exactly. None of them are in jail yet. It, yeah, <laughs> pending. And, uh, you know, then I'm you know working on a couple uh, X-Men projects now. Divided We Stand 2. I've got a uh, doing Wolverine with David Finch. Nice. Uh, I've got a couple cool things coming up. I've nice. got my uh, indie books from Image. Very good. Um, so as a writer and as an editor, tell me how that transition sort of happened. What made that uh, that sway? You know, I've always I was started out as a writer, and that's I started writing for Marvel. Oh man, it was almost eight years now with the Marvel Mangaverse. Yeah. And then they brought me on the staff, and Marvel has a pretty strict rule about if you're on staff, they don't really want you writing comics. There's a yeah. you know history of nepotism at Marvel that Joe and Dan have been really strict about not continuing. Yeah. And so I was happy being an editor for a long time, but when the writing bug hit again, I had to leave to be able to get a job. And, you know, Marvel supported my decision, which was great. But when I left, they said, it's going to be harder for you than for anybody else. We're going to be 10 times harder, so it doesn't seem like favoritism. So it took me a while to get my first pitch approved. But once I did, it kind of grew from there, and they realized they could trust me as a, a writer with good stories and good deadlines. And so once you were able to break the boundary, it worked out pretty well. Then you're rather synonymous in the industry. You're, uh, you're, you're the man to know. You, you know, a lot of people, you get the almost a pick of the litter of who you get to work with. Uh, for up-and-coming artists, who, how do you recommend they get into the industry? Just getting their foot in the door, you know, coming to cons, portfolio reviews, that sort of stuff. Yeah, you know, I always say that, you know, in breaking in, there's the four P's that you should remember. It's be professional and be persistent, but don't be uh, too pestering and don't be a pain in the ass. So there's a fine line to cross between, you know, being, you know, annoying. Yeah. But the way to look at it is comics is fun and games, and the way it's perceived, but in the end, the reality is that it's business. I mean, we all work for a living. So when you're submitting your portfolio, your portfolio, it's like submitting your resume. You are applying for a job. So just be professional, be courteous, you know, and you know, just really push. You know, it's, it's really tough to break in. Marvel and DC are the top. So if you want to start a lower lower tier publisher, self publishing, putting out your own comics, it's always a great way to do things. So you know, it shows you that you're committed, shows you're motivated, and it, it, you're working in front of the eyes of the editors. You grow from there. You work your way up the ladder. Right on. Uh, now, a couple last things. First sure. off, any dream projects you have yet to you're, you're dying to do at either company? At either company. You know, I love the characters from both companies. Uh, I've gotten to write a lot of characters. Uh, Runaways is one of my personal favorites. Some more characters I'd like to write more of someday. But my dream project, my ultimate dream project, there would be two. It would be to relaunch Cloak and Dagger as an ongoing series, or to get the original New Mutants back together and do a New Mutants kind of reunion book. I think that would be phenomenal. Uh, any particular artists you'd like to do either of those books? Oh, wow. Jeez. Yeah, I'd love to go back and work with Bill St. Kevich again, the original artist. That was, for me, you know, the ultimate comic growing up. But, you know, I, uh, I've worked with a lot of artists that I love. Uh, Olivier Coipel, Steve McNiven, guys like that are guys that I'd really love to get the chance to do, to do more with. More so. uh, one last thing. Where can we find you on the net? On the net, I have uh, uh, my own blog. It's uh, www.chesterfest.blogspot.com or I'm on MySpace, myspace.com slash chesterfest. And I'm always around on the Bendis boards, Miller World boards, you know, all different places. So. Good on you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cheers. Happy to